Hi everybody, today we're going to talk about the gumball and how to effectively use it in Rhino to speed up your CAD modeling process. So if you're familiar with my videos, you probably have seen that I'm using this piece of tool here, which looks kind of intimidating at first because it has a lot of things that you can click and drag and maybe mess up things. But I really like the gumball using it almost every time I have to move, have to translate or rotate an object. And if you don't see that, it's because usually it's turned off by default, I think. And if you can't see it, then just click down here in the lower section of the toolbar. There is something called gumball. You can turn that on and off. So usually when you want to move things around in Rhino and many other pieces of software, you have more options than one. So you can definitely use a tool specifically for moving things around. And I do use it often and use it specifically for certain movements that I know the gumball is not made for. And I can talk about this in a second and I will talk about this in a second. But just to show you the standard way how to move an object is you go to the standard toolbar here or the transform toolbar and you can see the move tool either here or down here. And moving things are quite obvious. You click once for the origin and then you click a second time for the final position. And here we can already see one big issue that I have with the move tool. It works well in specific situations and sometimes it just is not the right tool. So for example, right now I'm moving the lid, let's say of that bottle, and you can see it snaps to the ground here in the background somewhere. So it moves it somewhere along in the 3D space and that's not really what I wanted. So maybe I want to move it back a certain amount of millimeters in order to make space to change the model or something. So that might not be the ideal tool here. It does work in the front view, side view, and top view when you are in a specific orthographic view. So for example, here in the front view, we can hold shift and move it to the left or to the right, front and back in a straight line. So this works and there's a lot of use cases where you might want to use the move tool where you can select a origin point and a final point where to move that object to. So let me show you a situation where the move tool does work. For example, I have this bottle here and I have a second one over there somewhere. So this is not really a specific position. And I want to move that lid to the exact same position here centered on the bottle. So what I can do is with the move tool, I can find the center point of the cylinder and I have all these snapping tools on. That's super important. Sometimes you want them on, sometimes you want them off. I have the center point snap on and that helps me now I can click project first so it's not changing the set position. I'm moving this from its center point to the new center point here at the bottle. So you can see it's perfectly snapped into the center and it's at the same position as it was before on the new bottle. So this is a perfect way how to use the move tool. You have an origin point, you have a point where you want to put it to and that would be a situation, a use case where you want to use the move tool. And same with the different rotating tools, rotate 2D and 3D and scaling tools as well. So they have their specific place. But now I want to show you how I use the gumball in order to create fast iterations and even change geometry without using any other tools. So let's go back and get rid of that new bottle and let me create a cylinder first. So I'm recreating that bottle that you can see here and that would be the same height. And in order to be much faster with my iterations, I want to reuse certain elements of that scene. And I will do that using the gumball. So for example, I can drag the cylinder up and make a copy of it while holding Alt. So hold Alt and drag up. And you can see the small little plus icon on the cursor that indicates it creates a copy. So now what I can do is go to the scaling tool, hold Shift, and then scale that down. And I can even see how big that cylinder is by watching this area here where it says millimeters. As soon as I'm changing that, it says 10 millimeters, 11. And that's the diameter I'm changing it to. So I can even be very specific with my operations. So again, I'm moving that up, changing the scale here, the height. As I said, I can even see what the final height would be. So let's change that here and then move it up. And as you can see, I now created a completely different new geometry out of that old one 
just by using the gumball. So I'm not using any other tools that you have in the toolbar, not changing anything. I'm just using the features of the gumball. So now I can, for example, extract those two surfaces, right click on explode, which uh, extracts these two and then delete them. And with a blend surface, I can quickly create a new iteration of my bottle design, for example. So same thing now with the lid, I can reuse that top part. I can hold Alt and Shift at the same time in order to create a bigger copy of that top element. Then I'll resize the height, move it up, and then I'm going to fill that hole underneath. So let's go to Solid Tools and then cap planar holes. So that way it fills that hole here. So now I have a new iteration of the lid. You might be able to see that all these movements, like moving it back and forth or changing the height, for example, is changing it in one millimeter increments. So this is called grid snap and I have set it to one millimeter. If you want to be more gradual with your gumball movements and adjustments, you can turn off grid snap and that way it doesn't have these increments anymore. So you can scale it down much more gradually. So yeah, this is a way how to use the gumball effectively during your iterations, during the design process. And let's just create another bottle without me narrating and I show you how quick you can model with that technique. Okay, that was it for this video. If you learned something new today, make sure to subscribe down below and hit the bell icon in order to be notified whenever I upload a new video. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.